Hi, my name is Glenn Ludlam. I'm an instructor here at Clackamas Community College. Today I'm going to tell you about the different parts of the basic vertical mill. This is called a vertical mill because the cutting spindle is mounted vertically. It's not horizontal. All right, so let's start with the bottom of this machine, which is right here. This is called the base. Now let's go over here. The base is what the machine sits on. This right here, this big piece that goes all the way down to the floor, this is called the column. On top of the column, we have this little ring right here, and this is marked in degrees, and that's telling you where this piece sits. This is called the turret. The turret actually will be able to swing this this way and that way, however far you want. You can even put it in the back if you want. On top of the turret is this piece right here, and it's called the ram. The ram goes out and it goes back. On, connected to the ram is this right here. This is called the head. The head controls the RPM. It controls the um, feed rate of this right here, which we're going to get to next. The feet, this right here, is called the quill. The quill goes up and down. Inside of the quill is this piece right here. It's called the spindle. So the quill goes up and up and down. The spindle goes around and around. A little rhyme for you to remember that by. Okay, now we're going to go over to this side. This over here is called the table. The table has a vise bolted to it. A vise is not a permanent part of the mill, so this is not part of the structure of this mill. It's just something we use for a holding device. So let's get back to the table. The table here sits on top of this piece right here. This piece right here is called the saddle. And that saddle actually wraps over the top of this right here. This is called the knee. Okay, now, how do we control these? So this right here, you see this handle, that's the first thing that we can grab because it's right in front. You can see that the table is moving in and out. It's actually moving the saddle on top of the knee. This handle over here, it's the same on the other side. It's going back and forth, and it's moving this way. Now, some people call this the x-axis and the y-axis. So if that's the X and this is the Y, where's the Z? Obviously the Z goes up and down this way, but if we're going to control it, rough control right here, we can put it down, lock it in, that's our rough control. But if we want real accurate control, we're going to use this. We're going to use this knee lever right here. Now the knee goes up and down, right, with this lever right here. See, I'm going down. I'm going up. Each one of these has segments on it. Little segments. These little segments are graduated in one thousandths of an inch. This one goes around two hundred two hundred thousandths per revolution. This one goes around two hundred thousandths per revolution. So they're the same. This one on the other hand, so the the knee, I'm sorry, the saddle and the table are both 200 thousandths each revolution. The knee is 100 thousandths per revolution. Now you hear me talking about thousandths. Some of you don't understand what I'm talking about. Thousandths is how us machinists talk. So machinists, one thousandths of an inch is 0 .001. If we go 100 thousandths, that's 0.1. If we go an eighth of an inch, that's 0.125 or 125 thousandths. So now that we know that these are regulated by one thousandths each, um, if we go a full revolution, that's 100 thousandths on here, 200 thousandths on here. Let's say we want to go up an inch. Hmm. We can go here, try and figure it out here. That's not going to work. Or we can go here. We can say 100,000, I mean, one inch. Let's see, 100 thousandths is what it's going to go in one revolution. Hey, 100 times 10 is one inch. So we can go up 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. 
exactly one, one inch, 100 thousandths at a time. Now, I told you about those little segments. How do we know how to measure those? We measure our part, we're measuring it with a set of calipers. Calipers have regulations on them too. Each little segment on a caliper is, if you're using a dial caliper, is one thousandth of an inch. Brilliant. One thousandth, one thousandth. You measure a thousandth, you see a thousandth. I measured, I need to take ten thousandths more off. Huh, I move that ten thousandths. You've just taken ten thousandths more off. Or, oh my gosh, I've got to move over ten thousandths. You measure it, you look, and you go, oh, ten thousandths. I've just taken ten thousandths off. So that's how they all correspond. Micrometers are the same way. They're divided in thousands. So these all correspond with your measured equipment. Makes it really simple to use.